Here are 20 quick tips to help you win terraforming Mars. If you want to, there's a much longer version of this on my channel. Believe it or not, this is actually the short version. Tip number one, realize that this is an engine building game and play accordingly. So this means engine first, VP later. So generally speaking, there are two ways of doing this. You can go for money income, which is make a credit production, steel production, titanium production, also a little bit of TR, something like this. So this is the approach for long games, but if it's in your best interest to close the game as soon as possible, you can also build your engine with primarily heat production and terraform rating. We could say that the top half of the screen here is like the greedy engine, which tends to be better for long games. And then you could argue that the bottom half of the screen is like the timber engine, better for short games, better for the terraformers. And I really want to make clear here that this is like extremely oversimplified. Like even if you're going for the tempo engine, you probably still play acquired companies, you still play titanium mine, you probably even still play business empires or the mines, something like this. And likewise, even if you are playing the greedy engine, you can still play some of the stuff in the bottom of the screen. Other examples of tempo engine cards could be like nitrogen rich asteroid or it could be towering a comet. Towering a comet is actually kind of cool because what you do is you wait until you have exactly four plants and then you make the water on top of two plants because then you have a total of eight plants and then as your second action you'll build the greenery immediately. And of course if you are going for the timber engine, if you are going for TR to some extent, then of course stuff like Solita and Moholaria, these are very good cards in this case, regardless of what you might have heard me say in the past. Then it's also great to get some card draw. I think these three cards here, they're really good. I would almost always keep these three but getting back to card draw in general i think card draw tends to be better in long games in terms of generations which means the card draw in general is a little bit better in two or three player games card draw is to some extent part of the greedy card strategy it is like by the very nature a bit greedy and it completely ruins your tempo so tempo is very important when you're going for terraforming so the point i'm trying to make is if you're rushing then card draw is a little bit risky to pick up because then tempo might be more important for you than the card draw a random card is worth around three mega credits a random card in the two player game specifically is worth around four mega credits and the reason for this is that in these long greedy two player games the primary strategy is the greedy card strategy if you're going for the greedy game then the best approach is to get both money income and card draw if you can get a balance of both then you can go truly god mode and even though I say money income and card draw, that's really good. Actually, card discount plus card draw, that's even better. This can get truly out of control. A TI is worth like exactly the same as one VP plus one mega credit production. This is useful information because this will help you to evaluate cards. So now we know that nuclear zone, for instance, well, that's exactly the same as two mega credit production and a placement bonus, which is actually not too bad for building an engine. As a rule of thumb, one terraform rating is worth eight mega credits, unless you want to close the game really badly. In that case, you could make the argument that it's like nine or 10 mega credits or something but if we really don't care about this boring aspect of closing the game early then i think one terraform rating is worth eight this is true for the first generation and it's true for the last generation here's a graph of what i think everything is worth depending on which generation we are talking about and i've come to realize that this graph here is mostly reflecting the greedy approach to terraforming mass but if you are playing the tempo engine or maybe just for the average player in general then i think you could add one to all the vp and all the terraform rating in this graph and also you could lower the mega credit production just a little bit but you know what these values here are much easier to remember these are probably the values to live by so in the first generation one terraform rating is around eight one vp is around three and one mega credit production is around five unless you predict it's going to be a super fast game in that case i would argue that a mega credit production is worth around four then in the last generation one terraform rating is still eight and then one vp is also eight and then mega credit production is useless in the last generation tip number two in the early game you need to focus on climbing out of their hole first of all you do this by getting a little bit of money income you can also get a little bit of tr for the purposes of engine building one tr is also kind of worth one mega credit production. I think it's always a good idea to get plus 10 money income as soon as possible. In long games you need even more because then you need a huge engine and in short games and really fast games you could make the argument that you can make do with a little less engine. The point is the game is really hard to play if you don't have any engine at all. If you aim to close the game super early you can also build your engine with TR and heat production. Five player games specifically might be really short in terms of generations so in these games you might even consider VP and especially TR as soon as maybe the first generation. Tip number 2.5 engine building cards should be able to pay for themselves in five or fewer generations. Now we also come back to this idea that the value of mega credit production depends on how long the game is going to last in terms of generations. So if you predict the game is going to be super fast then mega credit production is worth a little bit less. And finally you should keep in mind that this rule about five or fewer generations this only applies to the first generation. The further we get into the game the faster a card must be able to pay for itself. If you do not climb out of the hole then the hole might become a black hole.
Tip number three, in the mid to late game, make the transition from engine to VP grabbing. This is equally as important as engine building is. So I kind of want to start grabbing VP when there are around four generations left and pure victory point cards should be played in the last generation. Tip number four, play to grab the bonuses under global parameters. So these are the bonuses that I'm talking about. So what can you actually do to get these bonuses? First of all, you can just keep the right card. So I'm talking about cards that just like leapfrog you like two or three steps off of a global parameter. So for instance, we got Deimos down or we got Giant Solar Shield or it could be strip mine. Secondly, do not give your opponents an easy way to claim the bonus. If you just leave the bonus there with like one or two steps until the bonus, then there's a pretty high likelihood that someone else will claim the bonus before you. And thirdly, you want to plan your actions carefully when you're getting close to a bonus. And finally, if you are the first player in the upcoming generation, you can actually set yourself up to claim the bonus in the start of the next generation. And the reason for this is that if you end this generation and also start the upcoming generations, you will have a lot of actions in a row and you can really use this to get the bonuses, amongst other things. Tip number five, if you want to prioritize milestones in shorter games for five player games, in long games they are less important, two or three player games. And just to get the awards out of the way, the first award you should claim like sort of in the early to mid game, but I want to stress this, only if you're really sure you're gonna win it, otherwise it's not worth it. I mean it's only eight mega credits, so if you're really sure you'll get at the very least the second place, okay maybe it's worth it, but as a general rule you really don't want to start an award unless you're very confident you're gonna win it. The second award that costs 14, you kind of want to start this in the mid game, and the last award that costs 20 this one is not that important i'm okay with starting this in the late game or maybe in the very last generation something like this but getting back to the milestones here are the milestones that i'm talking about so in the early game you always want to have milestones in mind and you should always aim to get one of the milestones at least but i think there's a little bit of wiggle room here regarding when to actually pick up the milestones so in a two-player game you want to fight for the milestones around generation five in a three-player game you want to fight for the milestones around generation four in a four-player game you want to fight for the milestones around generation 3 and finally in a 5 player game you want to fight for the milestones as soon as possible. In a 5 player game it is actually a race. So the basic idea here is that in 5 player games the scores are much lower because there are fewer generations which also means that the milestones are just that much more important because it's like a bigger part of your score if that makes sense. On the other hand in 2 player games the scores are going to be a lot bigger which means that in 2 player games the milestones are not that important. I mean it's still nice if you can get them but you don't really have to rush to get all of them. Tip number 5.5 don't make too many bad plays just so you can get a milestone. Instead, rather go for the milestones that naturally fit your game. So if you're Tharsis, naturally you'll gravitate toward the Maya milestones and maybe even the Gardner milestone. And if you're terraforming like crazy, maybe you're Umni or something, then naturally you go for the terraformer milestone. And to be honest, that's probably the only milestone you're gonna get this game, but that's fine. Tip number six, don't buy a milestone before an opponent is exactly three actions away from buying it, or technically maybe three actions away from claiming their last available spot. If you can wait before claiming a milestone, Milestone, then you should wait and the reason for this is that mega credits in the early game is worth a lot more than mega credits later on in the game so for instance the eight mega credits you spend on a milestone in the early game this is actually a huge chunk of your economy this could have gone into like engine building or something else like in one of the games on my channel I played against a Tharsis player who just built three cities immediately through his corporation and preludes and then immediately he just got the mayor milestone and I was like all right I, I like the three cities it's not great but it's not bad it's, it's okay but when you get the mayor milestone milestone immediately that's so unnecessary you can wait like several generations before you have to pick up this milestone tip number seven you should plan out your generation you should do the math you don't really have to but it definitely helps for instance if you have a really expensive card you want to play in the next generation because you cannot afford it right now then you should really do the math because then you know how much mega credits you can actually afford to spend in this generation so some example of these really expensive cards you might want to save up for it could be earth elevator it could be giant solar shade or it could be iron mining industries so here are a few examples of math that I do in most of my games. So the first one is all about what do I want to play in this upcoming generation. So I take my current mega credits plus my mega credit production minus whatever mega credit I plan on spending in the next generation. Also steel and titanium and stuff is implied in this case. And all of this should add up to at least zero but ideally it should be nine or twelve. And the whole reason for this is that this is all about how many cards can I actually afford to buy in the research phase. So if it adds up to nine or if it adds up to six then I know I have to restrict myself to only buying two or three cards. The second Second piece of math I do is just to calculate how many generations before a card will pay for itself and then you really have to take into account like I mentioned how many generations do I think is left in the game. And in the late game I simply calculate which of my available plays will give the most VP. Is it better to play the cards in my hand or is it better just to start spamming cities and greeneries? So do you need to do all of this math? No. Does it help to do all of this math? Yeah. 
Tip number eight, should I aim for a greedy long game or should I aim for a short tier heavy game? So let's look at how long a game of terraforming Mars is actually going to last in terms of generations. So if you're playing with preludes, which you should, preludes is amazing, then two player games will last mostly around nine to 12 generations, whereas five player games will last mostly six to nine generations. So these are the average number of generations across all players, but it really depends on the meta because players who enjoy having fun with their greedy engine. Hello, they will likely have longer games. So for people like me who enjoys the greedy games, it's not unheard of that the games goes to 11 or 12 or 13 generations. And then you might be thinking, well, well, the other guy can just close it. But in two player games, it's not that easy. But this is a little bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Because I enjoy greedy games. So most of my games are gonna be greedy, especially two player games. But then if another guy enjoys like going really like super fast games, then most of his games is gonna be super fast, right? And speaking of those guys, I should mention that the top ranked players will have super fast games. It comes down to that they are more efficient in just getting everything done a little bit sooner and also it's just the meta, right? The meta in these top 100 ranked games is just that the game ends a bit sooner. And then we're kind of back to this self-fulfilling prophecy that if the meta in these high games are just super fast, then the best strategy is to be super fast. Tip number 8.5. In two or three player games, aim to play the greedy card strategy every single game. This comes down to the fact that two or three player games tend to be longer in terms of generations, which means you can get away with more greed. But I thought about this some more and I realized that this also kind of depends on the meta. It depends on how fast your opponent wants to close the game. So after taking this into consideration, I think this is a more accurate way to look at it. In games that last 10 plus generation, you should aim to play the greedy card strategy every single time. So in 10 generation, I think it's a little bit of a draw. I think the greedy card strategy could win and also the terraformer could win. But if we go to generation 11 or more, I think the greedy card strategy has a higher likelihood of winning. And then you might be thinking, well, when I start a game, I don't really know how many generations the game is going to last and while this is true there's still a bunch of things you can do to actually try to identify this first of all number of players is a good indication the fewer number of players you are the longer the game is going to last in terms of generations secondly you can try to take into account the meta, like the opponents you're playing against, these guys, do they enjoy long games or do they enjoy short TR heavy games? And thirdly, around generation two or three, you should have a pretty good idea. If you look at enemy plan production and enemy heat production, especially, you should have a pretty good idea of what they are trying to do and how many generations the game is going to last. The greedy card strategy can also work in four to five player games, but it is a lot more risky. In four to five player games, the terraformers, or you could also say the tempo engines, these type of guys have a higher likelihood of beating you just because of the fact that the game tend to be shorter in terms of generations. Having all of this in the back of your head is very useful, but ultimately what it comes down to is you have to play with the card trigger. Tip number nine, get heat production in the early to mid game, or if you are a really greedy guy like me who enjoys long games, then maybe just never get it at all. The point is heat production is not that efficient when it comes to building your engine and plant production is actually even worse. I'll get back to that. But of course, if you are going for the tempo engine, if you wanna close the game super fast, then of course go for it. Heat production is good in that case. So what is a heat production actually worth? In the early game, it's worth around five mega credits, which is the same as a mega credit production, also around five mega credits. But if you're going for the really fast game, if it's in your best interest to close the game as soon as possible, then of course you could argue that it's worth a little bit more than five mega credits. I think I nailed the main difference between heat production and plant production. So plant production is always good, regardless of your strategy. Heat production is always fine, but it's kind of a lot better if you're going for the TR strategy, if you want to close the game, control the game. And since this is the logic we're using, we could also flip the coin and say if you're the greedy guy you've got the big engine you want the game to drag out for as long as possible in that case you should only get heat production if it's a really good deal if you get some discount or something or maybe you already can see that heat is not the last parameter to close in that case heat production is still fine when is heat production actually good one you play it early initially my thought about heat production is that it is better if you want to close the game but then i spoke to this former rank one player on steam and he actually said that it is also good if you want to control the game and when he's talking about controlling the game what he means is that it actually has some value just to have the opportunity to be able to close the game faster depending how it all goes and while it's not always the temperature that's the last parameter to close it is kind of true that the amount of heat production around the table actually kind of dictates how long the game is gonna go so if you want to be one of the guys who has a little more influence in which generation the game is gonna close then heat production is good but you could argue this is a minor thing to be honest mainly what you want to remember is that if you're trying to close the game then heat production is good and finally if you're getting a really good deal in heat production maybe 
maybe you have some discount or you could have a heat combo. So the point here is that heat production is a lot worse once the parameters max, which is why it's really good to have stuff like Meltworks, Helion, Kertica, Contract, Insulation. And this is of course assuming that heat production is not the last parameter to close because if it is the last parameter to close, then you're fine either way. Then I also put in optimal error breaking in Media Group and I just feel like these cards are often very good with these cheap heat production space event cards. Tip number 10, get plan production in the mid game or at the very least after you've built an engine of some kind. Plan production is always good, like no matter what strategy you're going for. However, it's a very bad way of building your engine, which is why I think the sweet spot for when to get plan production is exactly in the mid game. Because if you think about it, one greenery is kind of worth like three victory points, one victory point for the greenery, one TR for the oxygen and one VP next to your city. It could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less. But the point here is, it's not a lot of engine building here, is there? It's only like one TR for the oxygen. That's the only engine building you're getting out of this. The thing to keep in mind is that plants and greeneries are mainly a way to get victory points. In fact, I would go so far as to say that having one or two plant production in the early game is just straight up bad. Unless, of course, maybe you have a plan to actually convert your plants into a greenery in this generation or the next generation. Maybe you're intending to get plants off of placement bonuses or something so you can convert pretty soonish. In that case, you can be excused. But generally speaking, having one or two plant production in the early game is bad. And here is why. So the first reason is that this is money you could have spent on engine instead and also early plan productions tends to be really expensive it's a lot cheaper later on once the requirements gets met but in the early game it's very expensive secondly if you only have one or two plan production then it will take you like four generations just to get one greenery down and even that one greenery is only going to be worth one money income and the third reason is this guy if it takes you that many generations just to get one greenery down then chances are someone will have burned your plants before you get to that point here are some plant amplifiers you could be considering except for maybe worms all of these are great cards and if you are going for plant production it could also make sense that you're going for green tech synergy green tech synergy can actually give you a lot of points especially if you're going for the long game a card like meat industries can get completely out of control if you're going for animals so you could make the argument that plant production goes hand in hand with green tech synergy but then again you could also make the argument that plant production goes hand in hand with the city strategy so generally speaking plant production is better to play in the mid game but naturally if you get some of these insane late game plant production cards of course you also play some of these and in the last generation all of a sudden plant production is good again because in the last generation it's all about getting eight plants so you can make a greenery in the extra round so in the last generation you kind of want to play to make your plants plus plant production equal to eight or 16 plants or maybe a little bit more than this and the reason is this guy so maybe this guy hasn't had the time to play birds earlier maybe he just picked it up or maybe he just deliberately kept it in his hand just to grief you in the last generation just to make sure that you cannot build an extra greenery in the extra round and this can of course be really annoying which is why it could be a good idea to keep just a little bit of extra plants just in case but actually the biggest thing you could do to counter this is to slow play in the last generation we'll talk more about this in tip number 14 but basically the point is that if you pass the generation and he plays birds there's nothing you can do but if he plays birds and you still have a few actions left maybe there's something you could do to actually counter this maybe you can get a placement bonus or maybe you have a card with a few plants on it or something tip number 11 buy colonies especially luna and pluto even if it is with the standard project for 17 you know what the standard project is actually often good enough in the early game and of course if you get some of these colony cards i would be even more inclined to go for colonies these cards are good i would be happy to see most of these cards in my opening hand here are the colonies in the early game you're probably looking for some income it could be Ceres or luna pluto is also really good if you're going for the temper engine stuff like io and ganymede are of course also good choices and in the mid to late game if you just want to get a bunch of points you go for Enceladus, titan and especially miranda to be honest all of these colonies are actually really good it just depends on the situation as it is with all card raw pluto is a little bit better if you have an engine to support it like if you have no engine at all it's actually a little hard to justify spending 17 just to get pluto to get some cards but if you do have a lot of money income then pluto is straight up the best colony and in the first generation if you do have the choice between playing a colony in luna for 17 or playing some some optimal card of some sort then of course i would prefer luna every single time imagine if you will in your opening hand you have a card that you played three to buy so it costs 14 and gives you three mega credit production maybe a little bit more than three mega credit production that's pretty good that's basically luna but once again it must be said that mega credit production in general is better if you expect the game to go long but if you expect the game to be over in six generations then luna is maybe not worth it also of course it depends on what other cards you have in your opening hand maybe you have something better tip number 11.5 in most cases you want to buy a colony as your first action and then trade there immediately as your second action the only scenario i can think of where you buy a colony and don't trade there immediately must be 
because that you're anticipating someone else to trade there right now, or maybe you just desperately want the last available spot on that colony. Tip number 12, if you are playing with colonies, you want to get three energy production as soon as possible. It's a little hard to explain, but it is somehow just a lot cheaper to trade with three energy compared to three titanium on nine mega credits. Here are some different ways you can get energy production in the early game. You kind of don't want to buy too many of these power plants for 11, but you know, if you have two energy production and you can get the third by buying a power plant, go for it. Tip number 13, some things are better to do at the start of a generation and some things are better to do at the end of a generation. So here are some examples of stuff you want to do as soon as possible in a generation. So this could be milestone or awards. It could be getting the last few available TR if the parameter is about to close. It could be getting the best placement bonuses on the map. It could be claiming a bonus also on the global parameters. It could be spending your plans before you actually get hit by a comment. So once again, that's because of this guy. Could also be attack cards and it could also be effect cards that gives you X when opponents does Y. So I'm talking about pets. I'm talking about immigrant city, stuff like this. Here's some stuff you want to do as late as possible in a generation. So for instance, you want to play cards and use actions where you get X based on opponent's Y. So that's not the same as I just mentioned because what we mentioned before was effects. This is basically the rest. Now I'm talking Tull Station, I'm talking Galilean Way Station, I'm talking Martian Rails. So these are the type of cards that benefit from you waiting for as long as possible before playing it. So for instance, Greenhouses, why would you play this at the start of the generation? Maybe during the generation someone will build a city. So you play this as late as possible. And obviously when we're talking greenhouses and Martian rails and stuff like this, it's not actually the last thing you do in a generation. It's like the second to last thing you do in a generation because the last thing should be to spend the plants or spend the mega credits you get from actually using these cards. Other things you want to do as late as possible in a generation, for example, you want to make plays to set yourself up to win a race at the beginning of the upcoming generation. You want to terraform with action cards and heat resources also as late as possible. You want to decrease enemy energy production if they're using it to trade a power on action card or something like this. So basically, if an opponent has exactly one energy production, you probably want to steal that as soon as possible. But if he has three and he's using these three energy production to trade, or if he's played an action card or something that uses energy, and you can see, wow, he's exactly the energy he needs to use this action card in the next generation, then you actually want to steal it as late as possible because this way you could do the most damage because then he's got to pass the generation and then you steal it and he's got to, oh, I need that energy to trade and then there's nothing he can do about it. And also, if an opponent has predators, you want to make animals as late as possible in a generation, or maybe not at at all it kind of depends right it could be that someone else around the table also has an animal card and maybe the predator will then steal from that guy instead of you because maybe you have zero animals on your card this doesn't happen very often but it's just a thing to keep in mind tip number 14 you want to spend only one action on your turn unless you have a reason to actually spend two actions so why is it better to generally only spend one action on your turn first of all your opponents kind of show their hand before you do and it also gives you essentially more actions in a row so why is it better to have many actions in a row for example you can surprise claim a milestone you can claim the bonuses without being contested on the global parameters and it's, it's more like things are under your control if that makes sense that's just a lot of scenarios that will benefit you if you do not show your hand before your opponents and there are a bunch of exceptions to this rule so it could be for instance that the players around the table maybe just prefer that you take two actions on your turn maybe you're playing casually or something like this some groups prefer it like this it could be that there's some sort of race going on so maybe if you're like close to getting a milestone and oh the other guy is also close to getting a milestone and just have to beat that guy to get the milestone something like this could also be setting yourself up to get a better placement bonus on the map so for example if you play a city and then immediately you want to play greenery next to the city and maybe also next to water or something also in most cases if you're building a colony you want to build the colony as the first action and then treat immediately as the second action also if you have exactly zero energy production it's a good idea to play around energy tapping and power supply consortium so you do this by actually making the energy as your first action and then you spend the energy immediately as your second action could also be that you acquire plants as your first action and then you build a greenery immediately as the second action so this is how you play around asteroids could also also be that you just have one thing you want to do this generation and then you just spend all your mega credits titanium and steel immediately because this way you play around sabotage air raid and hired raiders but it's basically only if you have one big expensive cars like iron mining industries or something tip number 14.5 in the last generation it is especially important to only take one action on your turn so why is this a little bit extra important in the last generation first of all what if it's not the last generation it could be the case that your opponent's a surprise closing the game but it could also be the case that he's surprised 
not closing the game, which can be equally devastating. Slow playing is also crucial for fighting for awards. So for example, do I have a mega credit production card in my hand? Maybe I want to keep that for as long as possible because maybe someone is going to contest me in the banker or something. So it's kind of nice to know, do I have to actually play this useless card in the last generation that does nothing for me except give me a mega credit production? Or can I afford selling this and spend my mega credits on something better or something that gives me a point, for example? Could also be that someone started the miner and you're actually winning the miner, but you're only winning it if you're not spending your resources. In that case, it's also really beneficial for you if the other guy actually passes before you because then you know exactly how much steel and titanium you can actually spend on your Jovian amplifiers or something like this while still winning the miner. Also, if you pass the last generation before your opponent, they might remove your plant slash plant production, preventing you from making that plus one greenery. So we're back to this guy. This is really annoying. If you pass before your opponent, then you're more vulnerable to card like birds or something like this. And if you yourself is actually the bird person, then it's the same deal, right? You want to wait for as long as possible before removing enemy plants or plant production, because if the opponent has passed, then you can actually just count how many plants he can make in the extra round, and you can know if you'll actually grieve him by playing birds. Secondly, if you already passed the generation, well, then there's nothing he can do about it. So basically, in the last generation, it's an advantage if you are the last guy to pass the last generation. So basically, what I'm saying is, you shall not pass the last generation before your opponents, if possible. So keeping this in mind, you could also say that it's a little bit of an advantage to actually have a lot of action cards and stuff like this because it'll give you a small advantage in the last generation. Could also be that the temperature parameters maxed and you still have a bunch of heat left over. Well, you can actually just slow play by making eight heat into absolutely nothing and then pass the turn. It's a little bit frowned upon. To be honest, you have to be some sort of autist to actually do this, but it's something you can do. So when is it better to actually take two actions on your turn in the last generation? Generally, this is only something you do right at the start of the last generation if you want to do it. So maybe you're in a rush to start the last award. Maybe you're in a rush to get the last few available TR before the parameter closes completely. Or maybe you want one of the good placement bonuses on the map or just any placement bonuses all. Maybe the map is filling up completely. Tip number 15, card sequence. Do not play a card until you need it for something. So generally speaking, and your builder cards should be played in the early to mid game and pure VP cards should be played in the last generation. So why is it that some cards are better if you play them later on? First of all, Mega Credits is worth more in the early game compared to the late game. So this is why you don't want to play a pure VP card in the first generation. It does nothing for you. It doesn't build your engine in any way. And also during the game, perhaps the cards become cheaper because you pick up discount cards. So these are the discount cards I'm talking about. So why would you play some card that does nothing for you except give you VP in the early game when you could just wait for the entire game and then you pick up some discount and then you could play it for cheaper in the last generation. Also some cards are simply worth more if you play them later. I'll get back to that in the next tip. And finally, you kind of don't want to show your hand until you absolutely have to. So for example, Jovian Amplifiers, you kind of don't want to play these cards until the last generation except for Iron Mining Industries. So this is basically because it's only VP, but it's also because then you're giving away the fact that you are indeed going for Jovians this game. So if you're going for drafting and people already know that you're going for Jovians because you maybe you played water import from Europa or something, well then they're not gonna pass you so many Jovians in the drafting phase, right? Could also be Venusian Animals. So if you're playing this card too early, then you're kind of giving away the fact that you're going for science this game and then people are less likely to pass your science tags in the drafting phase. So you really don't want to play a card until you have a reason to do so. So you want to play Colonizer Training Camp as late as possible, but still within the five oxygen requirements. So this could be when the oxygen is like three to five or something. Don't play Ecological Zone or Decomposers until you plan on playing a green tag next. Don't play herbivores until you plan on placing greeneries. And once again, don't play Venusian animals until you plan on playing a science tag next. So basically what I'm saying is you must have a clear reason to play the card that you're about to play. If the reason is nothing except for VP, then you should play it in the last generation. Tip number 16, some cards are potentially worth more when played later on. The biggest examples that comes to mind are science tags and green tags. So for example, if you got research, this gives you like two cards and one victory point, just this card alone. But then if you also have Olympus Conference, Mars University and Venusian animals. Then all of a sudden research, just this card gives you three card, a rotation of two cards and three victory points. Another example is Advanced Ecosystem. By itself, this card just gives you three VP. But if you don't play it until the last generation and then during the game you picked up Vile Enhancers, Decomposers, Ecological Zone, then all of a sudden this card alone is worth three plants and five victory points. So in 99 out of 100 cases, you want to play Advanced Ecosystems in the last generation. And also there are a few cards here that just get better the later in the game you actually play them. So generally speaking, you also want to play these as late as possible, but it's not quite like this because sometimes you just need the plants of the mega credits right here, right now to make an amazing play. And then of course you want to play these a bit sooner in that case. And tip number 17, you want to play to maximize resource amplifiers. They can be really good. Sometimes they just straight up win you the game. But of course,
because by nature these are very situational. So what you do is you pick up a resource amplifier like one of these cards and then you try to figure out can I make this work in my game? Does it align with the plan I have? So most of the time these just give you like average value, you play it and you're like alright that's fine. Some of the time they're completely useless, maybe you don't have one earth tag in this game, why would you pick up cartel? And sometimes they're just straight up winning the game. Sometimes you get 10 mega credit production from playing satellite or if it's a 4 or 5 player game especially toll station is insane, something like this. So when you see these cards it's, you just have to make an assessment, is this the perfect card for this game that I'm playing right now? Like if you have a bunch of green tags and just top deck insects it can be incredibly powerful so just keep your eye out for these cards and naturally if you have stuff like insects cartel satellites you should maximize the value of these cards by playing as many tags as possible before you're playing these cards but also keep in mind that production is better the earlier you get it so it really depends on how many generations the game is going to last and stuff like this tip number 18 you want to play the good cards taking into account the number of players in the game because some cards are really good in two player games and other cards are really good in five player games so for example attack cards the card with the red border i would argue that these are slightly better in two player games why because then you're damaging a hundred percent of your opponents and also if someone retaliates well you're only two players so he's only gonna retaliate on you also the really greedy cards they tend to be better in two player games as well so for example we got ai central anti-gravity technology and interplanetary trade these cards can be very powerful but it does take a lot of time to set this up so what i mean is if you play this in a five player game maybe the game is just gonna be over before you actually benefit from these cards so this is why generally speaking these cards tend to be a bit stronger in two or three player games simply because there's gonna be more generations just because you're only two players and then you can get the conditions where these cards can really shine because you want to benefit from having these cards for like a lot of generations so definitely these cards are just better in longer games which is why they're better in two player games and also for the same reason in these long drawn out two player games the card draw cards are just really good as well because the go-to strategy in two player games is the card strategy and it makes sense the more generations you have the more cards you can draw and especially the more of these new cards you can actually get to play in these long games. So let's go in the other direction and talk about five player games. So I think these cards here are a little bit better in five player games. So we're talking Tharsis, Posada and Tull Station, Quantum Communication, Galilean Way Station. It's worth noting that a corporation like Posada is still good in two player games. It's, it's just a solid corporation but it is a little bit better in five player games. So to a lesser extent I would also argue that City Synergetic cards are also generally a little bit better in four or five player games. But this one is not as clear because in some two player games there are more cities being played than in five player games but statistically speaking these cards are just a little bit better in five player games and in four or five player games people also tend to favor tia a little bit more and it makes sense because in five player games it's gonna be very short so you want some engine you want some vp as soon as possible and tia just gives you both tip number 19 don't be afraid to use standard projects but use them wisely so first of all standard technology makes all the standard projects better especially the colony standard project in the early game but that being said let's assume we don't have standard technology so generally the way the game works is that the card is always more efficient than the standard projects but sometimes you don't have the right card for the situation so let's go through them real quickly so we got sell patterns well generally you should sell when necessary even if it is a card you paid three mega credit for but the thing is you kind of don't want to sell your cards until you need that plus one mega credits because your cards could end up being worthwhile because maybe the bad card in your hand just have the tech you need all of a sudden or maybe you get some discount to make the card worth it could also be the case that you just need bad cards in your hand to cycle that could be because of mars university sponsored academies or pluto and then we got the power plant well if you need it you need it it is a bit expensive to pay 11 mega credits just to get one energy production but it could be the case that you just have a card or you want to set yourself up to trade or something so in a lot of cases you actually do buy this and then we got astrod and ass grabbing and these two standard projects are generally the worst in the game so basically you never want to play asteroid unless well maybe you can get the water placement bonus on the temperature scale in that case it's really good to get it could also be that you just need to close the game and this is actually the biggest one especially if you are the terraformer if it benefits you in some way to close the game as soon as possible there will actually arise a bunch of scenarios where you just build a bunch of asteroids especially in the last generation maybe the last two generations and finally it could also be that you're close to playing a good card with temperature requirement but it has to be one of the really good cards it basically has to be farming trees or fish the ass grabbing standard project where you pay 15 to get one venus this is really hard to find a redeeming factor for this one this one is just straight up bad the only example I can think of where we'd consider getting this is because you want to play Venusian animals or maybe you can grab the bonus on the Venus scale. And then we got the Aquifier standard project for 18. Once again, this is also pretty terrible if you actually do the math, but there are actually some redeeming factors here. The Aquifier, you actually do want to play this sometimes. So first of all, it could be the case that you're close to playing a good card with ocean requirements. So it could be kelp farming, penguins. It pretty much has to be one of these two cards to be worth it, to be honest.
Island. Could also be capital or stuff like this. Could be that you have some water synergy going on. Could also be once again you just desperately need to close the game as soon as possible. Or it could also be that you can get one of the really good placement bonuses. The thing is you have two actions on your turn. So if you can place a water as your first action and then you place something amazing next to the water as your second action, it can actually be quite good. Then we got the city and the greenery standard projects and the main thing to understand about these is that this is pretty much a way to get victory points. It's not good in the early game. If you want to build your engine with cities then you pretty much have to have immigrant city marching real fast, maybe two out of these three cards. Otherwise the city standard project is straight up banned in the early game. It's much better if you have a card with a city, that's much better. And greeneries is pretty much the same deal. It's very bad for building your engine, especially if we are talking the standard project build a greenery for 23 mega credits. But in the late game it's very common to actually buy a bunch of these standard greenery projects for 23 and the reason is it's a pretty good way to get victory points in the late game. So when should you actually buy cities and greeneries? Well maybe you need to close the game, maybe you want the last few available TR before the parameter is about to close, maybe you can get the temperature bonus on the oxygen scale or maybe you're close to playing a good card with oxygen requirement but pretty much what this all comes down to is that in the late game you kind of want to build cities and greeneries to actually get VP. And finally we got the colony standard project. As I mentioned I think this standard project is actually really good. It's definitely the best standard project in the early game and in the late game you could argue that cities and greeneries is better but no matter how you slice it you should always look for the colonies. Is it actually better to just straight up buy a colony rather than playing the card in my hand? Sometimes it is. And finally tip number 20. Don't keep cards in your opening hand that has a crazy requirement unless. So this one is a little bit of a gray area. So in my opening hand I would never keep any of this stuff. It's way too late game. So the only exception would be if I have the ecology experts prelude then of course trees is really good. So in the early game pretty much only keep mid to late game cards if your economy is strong enough to pay the three mega credit for a card that you're not soon to use. And secondly the card must benefit you a lot when you then finally do play it. Because what you have to keep in mind is the three mega credits in the early game it could be worth more like 10 mega credits in the late game. So you just have to make sure that the card you keep in the early game is worth the high price of keeping it. So you could say a good tip for beginners is to not keep a card that you're not going to use here and now but it doesn't really reflect the whole truth. The truth is a lot of good players actually do tend to keep a lot of mid to late game cards pretty early on actually. So examples of late game cards you might want to keep could be the Jovian Amplifiers, it could be some of the really good juicy science tags, it could also be some of the plant production cards, especially the plant amplifiers. It could also be the green tag amplifiers. If I'm going for green tags I actually tend to keep these cards pretty early on as well. These can be very powerful. So it comes down to two things basically. First of all is your engine actually strong enough to keep these late game cards in the early game? And secondly it's a lot about tempo because Terraforming Mars is a snowballing game so if you're keeping a lot of late game cards in your hand then you're kind of delaying the snowball a little bit. So you could actually make the argument that if you're playing all in on the terraform rating, all in on cities, then tempo is actually pretty important for you. So in that case you cannot really afford to keep so many late game cards. So that's really what I mean when I talk about tempo. But on the other hand if we are in a two player game, it's a greedy really long game, maybe 13 generations, then you definitely want to keep a lot of late game cards. But that's pretty much it. Here are the first 10 tips if you want to pause the video. Here are the tips from 11 to 20. And in case you want to dive just a little bit deeper into educational terraforming mass videos, I have these 20 episodes planned on my channel. Most of these should be on my channel already. Thanks for watching!